Welcome to Fontribute, where we talk about fonts and their attributes. Fontribute. I am Erin McLaughlin, a typeface designer, and I'm here with Thomas Strachan, um, an amazing typeface designer and community organizer and cool guy. And here he is. Hi, Thomas. <laughs> well, hey, Erin. Great job nailing that intro this time. Yes. Thank you. Tana, and you're also really great job. A bot. He's also a boxer. Check him on Instagram. Anyway. Oh, so many plugs. <laughs> we're here to talk about fonts. Yes. Tell me, which fonts are we talking about this week? Well, Aaron, we're talking about, we're, we're exploring user interface fonts. I think there's actually some fun things to explore on that topic of genre. So I picked out this week Source Sans from Adobe, designed by Paul D. Hunt, and Fira Sans, designed uh, from Mozilla, with a collaboration with Eric Spiegelman and others. Uh, so these are the two I wanted to explore. And I, here they are for us to take a perusing of it. Woohoo. Wow. Interesting. Because yeah, they're very, they're very similar at first glance. So let's see what we can find close up. Got it. All right. So we got ends. Uh, Aaron, do you want me to jump in first? Please. Cool. So the first thing I'm seeing immediately when I was just exploring these fonts was, you know, here's your baseline, right, between the two, just how dramatically larger the X height is uh, of Fira Sans. This letter is much, much larger in comparison to our itty bitty N of source sand next to it. So that was probably the first thing I saw in immediately evaluating these two different typefaces. Uh, Aaron, what do, you, what do you see when you're looking at this? And this, this height up here, I want to know later on what the difference is between, you know, this supposed ascender or, you know, a top bounding box size. This will be interesting to see um, how the different heights compare across. That'll be that'll be kind of cool. And what else? I think, you know, you were saying that this feels a lot taller here in Fear Sands. It's also like the curve is a little bit, I would say, bouncier or something. There's a little bit more kind of like push going on in this direction, a little more of uh, a bouncy height, whereas this feels a little more like a straight curve and abrupt. Very subtle difference, but something i'm seeing yeah i agree with that basically you're saying the the shoulder i mean yes, that's the shoulder. shoulder the joint the joint to the shoulder right this zone yeah. right here yes they are feeling very they are they do feel different between the two of them and yeah i'm trying to see they both and they both you know i think take notice like what is similar between them right one thing to see is this top terminal both of these have the angle kind of that tapered kind of taper shape between the two of them as opposed to just perfectly rectangular mm -hmm. Right, yeah. so that's definitely one thing I noticed. Uh, so we can see, again, these are very similar in their strategies overall at this point. And Aaron. how do you, Aaron, how do you feel about the, the contrast? They, they seem at this level to be about equal. In yeah, there. they seem pretty similar. This like just seems very a touch thinner right here, but I think they look pretty similar and the stroke weight seems similar too. So, and even just the relative kind of narrow that narrowness, this does feel like a taller end, but they both kind of have the same fit, I would say. Are there more differences in the next letter? Let's find out. Okay. <laughs> I would say yes. <laughs> yeah. This, I would say the Fear of Sands, oh, it has a more rectangular kind of profile. This seems a little bit, you know, a, a lot more round. There's less kind of, what I mean by rectangular is there's kind of some pushing happening in these sort of corner areas, whereas this seems a lot more um, oval in shape. That's all I mean. Yeah. And again, also, I think there's, Again, I think this is slightly higher contrast. Yes. You know, compare these two. Uh, game of game of subtlety with this one of this project mm -hmm. overall. I would agree with you. I think you you kind of stole my thunder. I was going to talk comment about <laughs> yeah this kind of more squareness profile this round. I think it's important to note know is that something when you're doing user user interfaces, you don't get to use, you don't do these dramatic moves. That's not the point of the project. You do much more subtle moves, and the decision to kind of have a more square round. Right versus a more kind of old, like oval shape. I'm, I'm over dramatic. I'm over dramatic dr drawing it. Uh, things gonna have an effect on the on the texture of the type, how it looks when it's setting in words down the road, which we'll find out later in this episode. Woohoo! Ah, so now we got some differences. We got something more dramatic. Yes, you go ahead first. Okay, so that definitely the first thing we can see is the is the loop, right? An open loop decision at the end of Fira versus Source Sand. And that's one of the first things we see. We can also see, you know, the strategy of the ear, 
right? Kind of notice the just straight, very you know, it's very simplified form and, and source. This more flip, this flipped up kind of whoop metallic kind of flips <laughs> up like that. And I think in response to that, it looks like there's a there seems to be more kind of tapering occurring at this joint area versus here. If you notice between the two, probably to compensate for that decision. So those are the quick things I saw when we're looking at this. Aaron, what, what did you see looking at it? Yeah, that's a great observation. I think also, um, I mean, yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see if any other quirky bits like this occur elsewhere in the typeface. Because, you know, if they introduce this angle here, you know, this this wasn't angled. There, there wasn't, it, it's kind of interesting to see how these decisions are made and, you know, when they're ignored and not repeated. Um, the only other thing I would add, I guess, is just, again, watching this counter shape a little bit more rectangular and a little bit wider on the top here. This feels like a little bit more narrow of a, of a G. That's kind of all I've, that's pretty much sums it up, I would say. I don't know. I'm yeah. going to try to be succinct this time. So <laughs> I know, I'm trying to keep this under <laughs> half an hour of a conversation. I think some uh -huh. other things to take notice too is, uh, like, look at this profile, this curve right here versus mm, yeah. this one. Again, the squareness I'm seeing play out in these kind of decisions. Uh, this kind of much more, subtle, like, kind of a more curve. It's hard to describe, like, kind of a, just a more rapid movement of curve versus the more deliberate, yeah. slower pace overall. Yeah, I like how this is drawn a lot better. This feels a little, like, sad and a little lumpy to me. Sorry, but it does. But And, and also here, like, I kind of am sensing a little bit of weight like lumpiness of this curve or something it feels a little too thick here compared to like its reverse there i don't know there's some inconsistencies in this fear of g i don't that i don't particularly like anyway i'll let's be positive aaron yes <laughs> what, what should we move to our next letter or should yeah. i okay I think, well, I think we're good for now okay good hey hey you want to jump first on this aaron hey well, I think the first thing someone might notice is the difference here of the t uh, tail. What is this called? Outstroke? Yeah, a terminal tail. What the heck yeah. is it called? Terminal. Oh, Lord, above. Um, <laughs> we, so this one, okay, there we go. We got the angle that came back from the ear on the G. So we have that introduced somewhere else. So yay, that helps. These, you know, the tops of these kind of feel a little bit similar. They kind of have a similar kind of shear. This one's a little bit more closed in here, a little more rounded at the top, but not too incredibly different. But um, the other observations are this counter has a bit more of, again, that square profile where it, it kind of pushes out here a little bit more, you know, um, this direction and looks a little more boxy and pushing out up at the top. It's more horizontal pushing out into that corner, whereas this approach kind of mimics a little bit more about that oval shape that we saw in, in the O where it's trying to be a quick stroke, quick in instead of this taking its time. Hopefully that was concisely said. <laughs> yeah, I would I would second your point about the G. Remember how that G was like this? I'm, that's a horrible drawing. Let me redraw that. <laughs> yeah, it's like here's a, here's that top, right? I'm over I'm I'm oversimplifying, but basically you notice that momentum right there. I feel like that that speaks to the momentum of that bottom uh, zone of that G. You know, for example, between the two in the source sand. I would, the only thing I would challenge you on, on what you said about the terminals, is this one is dipping down, I feel, much more than this one yeah. is. Yeah. So again, this is much more of a, a boxy feeling across the board. Applied, as you said, also with how this is going with it versus, the, again, the angled energy over here. Uh, yeah, and just, they seem, let's see. I think this, I, I think partly because of the larger X height on it, Fear of Sands, it got away with allowing a, a good amount of space between these two, like a, lar a very, very large counter space that's larger than this space over here, right? Compare that to this, right? Between these two. These almost seem equal between the two, which is good. Nothing wrong with that, but just notice this one's larger. This is a larger counter proportion to that inner space. Right. Yeah. And the fact that this was more horizontal here and pushing up, it kind of allows for this space to happen. If this one were drawn, you know, more straight like that, this this would feel too closed too and closed, you know. Yeah. So good. Good note. Yeah. Very cool. Oh, telephone. Yay. Okay. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> Doing a lot, guys. We just, we just roll through things. OK. Yeah. OK, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I got this. So the main thing, <laughs> dramatically, the first thing you can see is, you know, the di different strategies, of, the strategies of drawing the K are different, right? This one has a three stroke, kind of a, 
This one joins it low, right? And this one comes off it, right? This one is these two come together, and then this. So I, we can see different construction strategies on that immediately on that point. Also, we can see uh, as well. We can see also notice that there's a. I think they're whoa, that's a badly leveled one. I think they're roughly close in their height, the a center height. I notice that this one this is sheared versus the flatness on this one. So those are the kind of primary differences I can see immediately between the two. Mm -hmm. Good point. I would say that because of this construction here in the fear sands, it's also a bit more narrow of a of a shape as well. It's like it seems a little more narrow to me. And at least like, you know, more of the weight kind of it's pushing this way and this kind of ah that there's a lot more open space there than there is in this kind of uh, negative shape. So that's, that's, that'll be fun to see in text, but I mean, they, I don't know, they kind of have a little bit of an overall different um, feel. I would, I mean, this, I don't know. Oh, it's going to be <laughs> weird to see that in, in text, that decision. I mean, I don't know what that looks like at a UI font size. So I'd be, I'm going to, I'm curious to see how that translates, whether it looks connected or not. I don't know. I guess it looks connected. Um, <laughs> and then the only other thing, this, um, you know, the hard part about drawing a K is getting the weight distribution. It's kind of cool to see this, these two strokes kind of look similar in weight in both of uh, both approaches, but yes. this bottom leg of the K had to get a lot darker in this design for it to not feel super light, but this one feels more narrow. So that's a tiny, subtle observation. Yeah, actually to piggyback off that, just notice the distance of the stroke over here versus how it is that when it comes to join yeah. with this primary stroke it has to taper in to compensate for that i do agree uh things are and, you know this kind this interaction is always a challenging one this is actually thicker here versus this zone over here between the two so i think i think i always find interesting in case how the compensations of strokes are going to be handled it actually almost feels like you know this was a primary stroke this was important but not this so so this was this was thinned out versus this was primary and this one, this almost speaks to like a, almost a humanist model, right? Kind of calligraphic thinking, right? Here's your thick strokes going this way. Your thin stroke is this one. Yeah. Between the two. This one's following more, this one's following a more of a humanist calligraphic thesis of, of contrast. Well, this is more of a grotesque uh, kind of thinking by averaging. <laughs> you average out the nice. weight so it feels even overall. Well put. Yeah. Well said. <laughs> Also, you know, something I was actually very surprised about when I went through making this file was, I always forget this, just, you know, just I rem get reminded. Notice the side bearing. See, like, this space mm. seems consistent. And then notice how super tight it gets yeah. on the left, on the right side. Uh, the reason why is because you have a diagonal stroke. So we, you have to deal with all this negative space built up by this construction. So the solution is to make a very tight side bearing on the right side of the letter. So I just wanted to, I just feel like, I, I feel like it just behooves me to state that since I made the file and actually, no, I maybe mean, it was, maybe I was expecting a little, a little more white space on these sides. Yeah, That's yeah. why I was surprised about it, but we'll find out how it works when we get to text. Good note. Yeah. E. e. Wow. So why did you choose to put the E in? Tell me, I'm curious. Or should I talk? You know, this, you go for it. I'll just say this. It's so funny to see this, that the the um, counter of this E looks so much more tall. I mean, it just looks really, <laughs> it looks so tall compared to this one. It looks almost like I have to do this because it almost looks like a little face, you know? Yeah. Okay, done. Immature Aaron. <laughs> I have to do that every time. But it, yeah, this, uh, this is a good way of seeing kind of, again, the boxy rectangular form. You can feel this kind of... Um, I don't know, the, the thrust going in that direction, whereas as this one's kind of resting on a little point here, this feels like it's more robust down here. Um, I don't know, tell me what your thoughts were. I think I, I chose this letter to help. I think it helps demonstrate kind of, not kind of, but I believe it really does show the point of the process of why they chose such a huge X height for Fiora Sands. I think it's because they want, the priority was maximize counters. We must maximize counter space as much as possible. Yeah. Uh, so this is why I feel like this E is like so ginormous compared to the source sans brother uh, next to it or sister. Yeah. I don't know. yeah. Can fonts have gender? I don't know. <laughs> but um, but either way, yes, I think I, I brought it on here to kind of demonstrate the strategy it seems to be in this project was 
to maximize legibility by like massive X height and prioritizing counter sizes as much as possible. Sure, sure. Yeah, good point. Yeah, and it's funny because it almost becomes, it almost looks like if it were just a little bit like lower, it would almost seem like the proportions of a display typeface where, you know, with a low yes. um, crossbar. I mean, it's almost borderline. It's pretty funny to me. Those yes, just, that's what I was going to comment too. That's why I, I make that comment about yeah. I think the project was maximize counters. We cannot allow anything to, to deviate that program or as much as possible not to. Very cool. Ooh, what's our next letter? Oh, fun. Diagonals. I brought in two just because I feel like... Uh, um, they look really similar to me. Am I, I feel like I need to rub my eyes. Show me how they, these are different. They're very similar. Well, they are very similar, yes. Again, this is why we know it's a similar project or they're trying to <laughs> achieve similar things, right? Now, well, but the, the movements in type design, let's, spoiler alert, your decisions in type design that are air quotes unique, it's a very small range of decisions. I'm just being honest with you. Uh, once you get down to parameters, very focused like this. So obviously one is the X height, right? So we can tell, we can defer to di the difference because of that, right? These are taller. So therefore we know this is, this is a fear sans one on the right. Actually, I wanted to show this again because uh, this is a more general statement about how sans serifs are drawn and how they deal with contrast. Because uh, take notice, like notice the stems, specifically these, in, these inner ones and the Ws compared to the V system. I think when you're drawing type, you would expect like, oh, the W is the V. They're just the same thing. It's just doubled, uh, <laughs> but it's not. And I, I think these both these projects demonstrate that point. Uh, notice this is these are dramatically thinner in this in the fear of sands versus the outside. And that project it's it's still applied to source sands, not as much because we we've, we've deducted that fear of sands is higher contrast. Right. So these will need to get thinner, but. The point that the point still holds and just take notice of this inner ones right compared to the rights in this case the right side of the v from both projects nice wow i'm glad you demonstrated that that was a really good good thing to show um because we don't focus on the angle characters all that much and one other thing you know like you were saying like that this is a little bit thinner than you know this contrast because it's high contrast also it, to me it looks like the um you know they brought this little crotch point down just ever so slightly lower than they did in source sand so that's that also is another observation but wow oh that's so cool gosh yeah. and maybe this one also looks like a, a little bit wider like the aperture is, is of this opening maybe just feels comparatively maybe not i don't know the height is messing with me i know the height's gonna mess it up with that analysis hmm. i do feel like this these seem wider these kind of ah uh, yeah right the tapering is much yeah. more dramatic in uh source sands versus fear sands i think i'm explaining why the these right. crotches are deeper down is to compensate for that difference yeah nice good observations see even things that seem so <laughs> like even the things that seem very indistinguishable actually do have things to reveal to us the only question is why why do we look at this nobody knows okay tight people are weird what's our next slide <laughs> <laughs> so we're on to now and listen listen at, let's look at the cap height and also i think what see so there's been like a long statement belief that at least i've heard as a type designer like oh sans serifs no one uses smell caps who, uses, who draws smell caps in sans serifs no one uses them uh I just want to take a note of appreciation uh, that both these projects added small caps to their project. And I wanted to demonstrate it with a slide to show that, plus some general observations with the capitals and the lowercase a centers in X height. So Aaron, uh, the floor is yours to, what's the observations you can make with that? My observation is, oh, I really like this small cap H more because I like when small caps are a little bit more wide, wide. Spinning, yeah, than the than the regular. Then like it I feels agree. better. This feels like it, it was just a scale. literal scale down, but this felt like oh, we're we know that as we get smaller, we need to widen the characters to make them feel like appropriate and feel stable and stuff. But anyway, ah, Paul Hunt, if he's watching, he'll appreciate that. Okay. <laughs> um, Let's see. But uh, yeah, like you're saying, so the small cap, you know, obviously this would represent, this should represent where the, you know, the, no, is it? No. The, That's cap, not where the X no, is. No, incorrect. Cap heights are slightly oh, higher. Right. It's a little bit higher. You're right. Oh, yes. 
can you tell I don't care about small caps? I never make them. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there, but yeah, a little bit, even this, but yeah, even that feels a little bit higher in relation to the X height than that one. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Okay. Aaron, oh, I wish I could delete what I just said. Um, but again, um, this tape, man, this tapering, let's, this is going to be fun if we can see that in, um, or tapering, the shearing, we can see if, we can notice that in the text settings because it's going to make it seem even higher than just a flat, abrupt thing. So that's going to be fun. Um, no, you tell me what you think. I don't know what to, to do to deduce no, from this slide. Well, my, from my understanding, <laughs> half heights are taller than X height. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not by much, but they are. And uh, I would agree with right. you. It's all good. It's, it's okay. We, we live and learn. It's okay. Oh, God. Be nice. Everyone on YouTube, be nice. Eric, if you're listening, be nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would agree. Now, to be fair to the guys at uh, Monzilla and company, uh, they did at least <laughs> optically correct the scale down. It was not like a one-to-one. -one. They didn't just scale it down, left it to be. Because otherwise, this would happen when we do we do fake small caps. We If we scale down automatically, um, usually the thicks are too thin. Like they're not thick, they're not the right weight to feel even with the capitals, for example, or the lowercase. And I feel like that was that conversation was done here. But I would, I do agree with you, Aaron. I do believe I have a preference for wider small caps as well. That's why, yeah, the source sand small caps does make me happy. Yeah, uh, that's a project. It would be fun to see if someone uses that in um you know it knows that that is in the font that's the other thing that's hard i know no like, one knows i know no one's gonna know that's in the font the web designers are using this that are gonna make an all caps link or headline or this or that or whatever they're not gonna realize oh they could actually use small caps and it might look it might set a little bit better nope they won't yes know that. well oh, that's wow. that's but see aaron that's why we're doing font review maybe <laughs> maybe one designer note will find out wait a minute there's small caps and to my understanding, yeah, CSS, you can quote it. You can grab it. You can grab That's it from the right. font. You're right. I think you're right. And maybe maybe I will even look at these fonts and be like, oh, did you know that small caps are not at X height? Maybe someday I will remember that. Wah, wah, I failed the <laughs> test. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. We're only human. Uh, <laughs> it's all good. Okay. Let's, let's, let's proceed. <laughs> By the way, before Whoa. we... Uh, yeah, I wanted to show a cap in the letter because I thought like, this one really stood out to me. Um, in terms of the brief difference between the two of them, yeah, and, yeah. Aaron, what do you see? I'll let you. I'll let you jump on this first. There's a difference now. Whenever I see an M like this, I just think of the McDonald's Arch logo. Is that accurate? What? You don't see. Well, I don't see. You don't see an angled M very often. Where? What other? Is it Trebuchet? What's the font? Like, there's a common web font that uses angled. I think it might be Trebuchet or something. I, believe, I don't know. I anyway. believe it is. Hey, you guys on YouTube, tell us and let us know. What is it? Yeah. So anyway, our discussion when we were looking at those Ws, like here's a perfect example where you see that these, you know, outer strokes are much thicker than the inner thin strokes. So that's kind of interesting to see, you know, especially in when it's angled like this versus when it has a straight stem. And you can see here, like, so the difference between these is there wasn't a lot as much tapering going on here as there is in this upright construction like you have to it's kind of hard to see but you really do have to kind of eat back in whoops whoa that didn't go how i thought it would um have to like eat back inward toward toward itself in order to get this you know angle to to join and not have a huge black blob here in the corners so that's kind of interesting um also you know also interesting to note that you know we have a lot of options when designing an m like how far down does this little you know what is this called crotch another crotch i don't know how far down does it go some m's are just designed all the way down these are things that you don't notice until you're actually drawing a typeface like wow there's a lot of variations tell me what you see when you see this what's good what's bad well Why? yes i think generally we can say again the sense as you said the kind of nature of contrast right if this was calligraphic and thinking this is this is why love nor zai I understand that I love the pen model, the writing model of thinking about type, but let's be honest here. There is a time when it doesn't work because, you know, under the logic, right, you would, ex you would expect something like this. And just the evidence of reality is you don't see that <laughs> when, when you get to, when you get to protest and sans serifs. So they use a different logic of contrast, how to harmonize themselves. Uh, so we can see that in this demonstration. I would say I, I think even I do feel like in fear they still do the strategy of like ink trapping, right? The kind of these tapers 
to cause to get some more white to not so these crotches are not so dense. Uh, you can see that in both. I think you can see that in both. Now I do agree that the source stance is more dramatic about it. They started earlier in the stroke, right? And the depth is a different approach, but I think that's I can see both of them attempting the same strategies how to solve that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, like also this is quite a narrow. I mean, I mean it could be wider, but you know they kept this quite a compact narrow M, and I imagine you would do that for. Um, screen reading and like anytime where you want to do like long form reading i would typically think that people tend toward like the more narrow proportions for the wide letters like m and, and w but um you definitely see that here this one obviously is a bit more wide it's gonna be that's always fun when you forget if you've drawn an m this way and then you're like oh wait i might actually have to kern things back toward the m which i normally would think would be a straight-sided character so that's remember to to think about that if you've done this um, yes. Anyway. <laughs> By the way, one last note, Aaron. Can you can you confirm for me? I feel like this is heavier than this setup. Yeah, you're right. It is. It I is. find it very surprising, considering because we've seen that you know, fear of sands. It might be because it's an uppercase versus a lowercase. So perhaps the introduction of contrast is more dramatic than the lowercase letters. But the program we've seen up till now is that it's been higher contrast for fear of sands. So I was a little I was a little surprised when I did this mock up or represent, representation to see lower contrast and fear sans is capital m versus the source sans I, th I just think if this one were wider then it would be it would be thicker here it's just it had to get so much more narrow or you know thinner here because the the, the narrowness itself is more narrow that's my thought but that's fine that's cool just want to verify i was like am i seeing things am i, is my, am I seeing the right things too <laughs> it's cool all right that was a good slide thank you for showing that Ooh, fun uh, Ooh. Our, our beloved punctuation accent mm. character slide. Yes. So in a previous um, presentation, we were showing how some accented characters in, um, what was it, the production spectral, they were mm. actually, they had a really high, you know, there was a really high um, box. What the heck is this called? Oh, Bounding box, yeah. Morning, what's wrong with me? Bounding box. Um, because they, you know, they used all the space for accent characters. They were very push toward the extreme. So I don't know it's, that isn't the case here. So that's kind of a fun surprise. And here, boop, they're poking out a little bit <laughs> above, which is kind of fun to see. But um, yeah, wow, first note that um, kind of the very different angles when you look at the um, mm. acute and grave, like here it's a lot more kind of in your face, really sticking up more vertical here. It's more subtle. So, you know, that might, I wonder if that's just the, I wonder if the background of the designer even help if it even influences that because you know if someone is speaking English and isn't using um, accented characters too often, I wonder if we just in general have a totally different perception of of what they should look like than someone who uses them every day. I'm just saying that because I think people who might use umlauts would draw them differently than someone like me who never sees them. Anyway, interesting observation. This is just insane though. Like looking at the difference between the quotation marks and apostrophe, that is just so fun. I don't think I've ever quite seen one quite like this before where it's kind of just a wedge, like, yeah, it's know, like a, pushed it's like into a, a big it's a, Yep, it's a circle and a wedge. Yes. It's so interesting. So it's, a, you know, the effect is just, it's a lot darker, but it's also kind of weird to me. Like it feels kind of, nondescript like it should it should have been either more decisive about being a wedge or something like i'm i'm not a huge fan of them at this scale but maybe we'll see differently when we when we see it in text please talk for a moment I'll yeah totally. my tongue. well a couple of things one is it's interesting i feel like you, you're not you're kind of giving a kind of thumbs down on on these quotation marks i'm i'm a little unconvinced with the source sans ones they seem mm -hmm. a little meek <laughs> yeah they're a little light or something they're kind yeah. of or i don't know you know, I I actually say it with full empathy because uh, I know personally I I always get like such weird feelings about punctuations like so, like I'm like oh these quote marks they sit, they're so much an annoying character to draw with any kind of conviction personally for me I always have person I always have personal hangups on those myself so I only say this with just empathy of myself when I look at this um, yeah I do agree the slope is very surprising it's to, it's the degree the difference of sloping I'm very surprised about I feel like I mean, these. I don't. I feel like these are maybe too extreme. <laughs> like they're both extreme on, on opposite ends of the spectrum. Source Sans was like, we cannot allow any ambiguity of this in any way whatsoever. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Source Sans is like, ah, eh, it's fine. Maybe be confused for 
a macaron. Who? Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I'm being I'm being a little facetious. Yeah, especially like like the tilde tilde is really. I mean, those are really different too. That is so fun. That's it's a fair point. Actually, I think yeah. they told us actually a great point about that. It is true. This one actually might at smaller size might be confused for the macaron, right? Because uh, the wiggle is not pronounced enough, right? Yeah, that's interesting. Although, you know, that's the funny thing. That's why I'm so confused about accents. Like, I need to research them more because, you know, how many languages are you actually going to have a Macron and a tilde in the same text? You wouldn't really, I don't think. So then it's like, well, if your eye sees that, you're going to know it's this, right? I don't know. Maybe. or see, That's it, me or being what? a dumb American. So mm -hmm. there we go. <laughs> yeah. Also, I, I, mean, I only say, so the reason why I even point out this, the picture of the slanting is that I think that affects, no, I, I my, my first training in type design was accent character work. So extended character sets. So I have a soft spot for this topic, but so your accents have different like centers of gravities of center, center of balance based on how they're drawn and their positioning. And the, the goal of a good accent character is to have a good balancing between the momentum of your accent and the main letter, right? And they're not always mathematically centered uh, between the two of them. So, cause if you do that, then things feel like they're leaning more towards one to one side to the other. So, for example, like notice we call it like, like these accents are balancing because they're so uh, sloped that the center of balance is like over here. And A center of balance is kind of like a slightly in front of the, the curve, right? So I feel like yeah, Source Sans did a good job of balancing the strokes, right, within the letter. I feel like mainly because of like how unsloped, how very flattish these accents are. I feel like their center of gravity is... Like I, I, I feel like the center of gravity is off on the fear of sands between the two, like within these two over here. Yeah, to me, it just feels like this is like one character, whereas this is like okay, it's a letter, but someone drew this little thing on. Where it, like this just feels like it's one form. It doesn't feel like a a mark or something. If you know what I mean, like I don't know. It, it. I, I mean, I agree. It, it. If I were imagining someone writing by hand and then, boop, going later, making a little. Th that's not what this feels like. It doesn't feel. Uh, oh, wow, I'm really bad at speaking. <laughs> but you know, I, I mean, I, I guess I know what you mean. But on the other hand, if you're trying to be compact and stuff, I mean, this it's uh, it just feels like a solid unit. But I don't know. I, I I can see how this might be preferred for someone who reads a lot of accents, just because it's this is going to be flickering a lot. Like if you're reading text, I can imagine these being very distracting, just because they're so tall and and um, pronounced. I don't know. Let's get some test readers. <laughs> Maybe is the answer. I also, know. I think we should probably also start doing text with accent characters, like mm -hmm. running text, so we yeah. can be better analysis about this. Oh, by the way, I'm very empathetic to that problem of, of compactness, right? But then it leads. This is why, like, this is the problem with dying, with critiques and type design. It's like your your assessment is based on a lot of conditional statements. So, for example, if these were sloped a little higher, right? I think then maybe its positioning would be correct or something like that. I don't know. Like that's my thing. It's a lot of other conditions that speak to each other that results in, in our feeling about it. This would be a great opportunity to have a, a, a guest reviewer come on and someone who's like Czech or something or someone who uses tons of accents every day and sees tons of these marks. It'd be really kind of cool to get their ideas because I'm just talking out my butt right now. Um, but anyway, I, oh wait, I just want to go back. I think you're right. Like looking at... Oh, now that I'm looking at these again, these quote marks, it is they seem kind of a little thin or something, or the curves aren't as confident as we saw, like this kind of curve. This feels a little more like wobbly and thin or something to me. Yeah. And also, but it is nice to see that both of them, in both cases, the designer was like, we are making these quite long and large so that you can see them when they're at small sizes, which I really appreciate. So that's something I think a lot of folks get wrong. They they make the punctuation marks too small too baby yeah, yeah. They're, too, they're too hard to read on screen so. fair enough ah and also Fun. again so i i i, I want to draw the, i picked up this slide because numbers are important i also hate them <laughs> <laughs> um but i i really again this is why i appreciate for both projects they really pushed it hard on their supportive character set in this case they added uh, numerators and denominators in their fonts so and I, and I feel like both of them did good approaches in terms of color, drawing them that have harmonized with their with their normal lighting numbers in this case. And I wanted to share that. So Aaron, what are your impressions of it? That's cool. Yeah, these numbers are drawn a lot with a lot more care than a lot of the other examples we've looked at, I think, in um, 
contribute so far. Like these kind of look, these look good to me. It's funny, some of the differences, you know, just seeing like the um, nines, this is kind of fun. How this tapers down. Although like, I don't know, this weight, there's weird weight stuff going on when it shrinks down to a smaller size like that. It looks a little strange to me, the the weight difference. I would get so much smaller. But um, so that's a fun difference between them. And of course, different approaches to doing the four. I miss this four. I don't see this kind of four too often. I, I miss it. I like yeah, that one. It's a good four. I it's agree. a good four. <laughs> <laughs> and then also, of course, our another difference here, um, you know, the foot of that one. But notice that they limited eliminated that in the um, numerator denominator version. Probably, I don't I don't know why they would do that. Maybe just to make it easier to space the slash, against yeah. the yeah against the fraction bar i guess i don't know yep, fraction bar it's all of this yes there you go <sighs> yes i don't know what are your thoughts are, and this, these are just the default characters that's correct those okay. are the default yeah. lining yeah wow they're kind of the same like look at the widths they're very it's like a similar string that's kind of interesting too i know it's fun yeah yeah so these yeah, Ozzy, oh, go are, on. oh no, I was going to say, I'm like, oh, wait, let's look, look at these. These are a little more loosely spaced, I guess. That's another observation. All yeah, right. I was going to comment. That's actually one of the first things I was going to oh, comment my... out. Still in my thunder, but it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, these are looser spaced, right? Um, so I'm curious about, I, I, yeah, I agree with the terms of the weight issue here. I'm curious about that. You know, I, I, I have to see it in settings to confirm. Um, yeah, so again, overall similar. There are some formal differences, you know, even things like kind of a wave here versus a straight, hmm. right? Things like that. And yeah, I think, I, I think, I basically, unfortunately, you still most of the things I was going to comment about it, but the main notes is I think they're generally drawn pretty well. Um, and I'm pretty happy with, like, you know, I think this is a good thorough work on numbers versus other projects we've seen as as you've shared before you know even things like you know i really appreciate like how the weight distribution is handled you know in both these examples i think they're both handling it pretty well overall but in this case you actually can can verify like in the introduction of contrast right this is much higher contrast between these two versus these two mm. although and, look at the contrast of the six and the nine ah very similar yeah. yes ah, I don't know. Anyway, okay. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> I don't know. Cool. <sighs> All right, so bouncing forward. And here we are. We're at the moment, the oh, review. I love this part. My favorite slide is always the text slide. Oh, the culmination. Oh, oh, you even put the, oh, yeah. I don't, the I, ca small caps with the full caps. Ooh. Yep. Yep. Aaron, what are, your, what are your impressions? Oh, my. Well, yeah, my, my first impression when I saw this is okay the interline spacing here like the fear sands i find this particular setting it's kind of hard to read it feels like it needs more space in between each line like so the default space you know letting kind of which is weird because this whole time we've seen that the that bounding box was so much higher than the source sands. so i'm just like really confused why this appears this way but i guess it's because of the hugely high x height, x height. it just fills it up um and then the characters are kind of very loosely spaced. I feel like the word space, like I wish it were just a tad wider or something. Like I find this a lot like easier on the eyes just in general. So it's kind of even hard for me to like look, compare these one to one because they seem very different at this, in this setting. I don't know. They, they seem, this one just seems larger and more of a mishmash, like more of a, a just like bleh, it's a big, big gray blob versus this seems like actual lines. No, no. <laughs> Aaron, let's be technical with their no. analysis. But I mean, like if this, if this had more letting, I'd be able, and we're like a couple point sizes smaller. I think I'd be able to like really like look at them and notice the differences. I have to try harder. I have to sit here and like think about it harder. You speak while I'm thinking. Certainly, I think a bit. I, I think a more technical, fair way to describe your net. You're just what you're talking about is uh, out of the box. Furious hands probably needs add, line height added to it or letting added to it, and maybe at a smaller type size, uh, because these are Caesar said the exact same type size and spacing line spacing setup, so to harmonize if you're going to use these two together or just a now I review them one to one. So, and I think you're correct that the uh, reason for this is most likely the X height being so dramatically larger. X height has a huge a a implication on. How the body of the type feels uh 
across the typesetting as a paragraph. I think that's the main thing. So I want to also point out a couple of notes just while Erin's collecting herself and getting herself <laughs> together. Uh, I actually, I feel like the punctuation is actually a little heavy in Fear of Sands. I mean, I feel like, I appreciate they're they're very, I can see them very easily, like they're very pronounced. Uh, I think they're slightly heavy, yet I feel like in Fear of Sands they're too light, like they seem a little light. Or maybe I think the terminal stroke, the kind of round terminal flare out of Source Sans's uh, quotation marks are too thin. Something's going on where they just seem too meek. They seem much meeker and not uh, confident than the rest of the letter forms in Source Sans. So we can see that micro analysis paint uh, affecting in the body copy setting uh, overall. Ooh, yeah, I'll jump in and say, yeah, I do agree. I like, I mean, the shape, I, the roundness of the shape and there's so much contrast in them. It's, it's, it kind of draws too much attention to itself. But when you look at it, you know, as just a body of text, it, it is, it fades away. I agree. Meek is the word. But this, I mean, I do agree. I like that they're, it's more kind of stable and bold and you can see it a bit better here, but I still am kind of unsure about why the, the shape was chosen. This kind of like halfway well, it, it looks kind of unfinished or something to me. I'm, I'm not quite so sure about it in this, in the Fira. I don't know. Well, Aaron, do you, what, do you believe it could be, it would be like, do you think like this shape would be the better, better choice? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, yeah, maybe it's just the fact that it's like round. I just feel like this should have had a more square based um, punctuation approach or something. I don't know why, but it, unfortunately I'm just, Maybe I'm just always wanting to average it more toward whatever the imaginary sans serif in my head is, and I'm just always wanting everything to wipe away any originality. Maybe I'm one Maybe. of those horrible I'm a, people. I, I don't know. The only thing is I feel like <laughs> this project, like, as we noticed, where there's a general squareness in Fear of Sands, right, and the rounds and how it draws itself, yet the decision was made. We didn't, we didn't review it in a micro, but notice the tittle is a round, right? Oh, right, yeah. Uh -huh. So there's always this, like, built-in tension uh, between like the squareness, yet the t the tittle being a circle, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's kind of what you're. It's being because they want. I assume they they made the assumption they wanted their quotation marks to speak with their tittle. In this case, uh, you have the tension where it's like, okay, so then this is a circle, and then you got to add the squarish with the daggers mm, yeah. uh, aesthetic. Yeah. But anyways, but that's a particular right of the. That was a good observation. Yeah. So. I also added in, by the way, uh, fraction marks. And yeah, the, I love I, this. I love yeah. that four in that. Oh, it looks so good. Um, and also, like this, this fraction looks uh, in source. I think looks a little light compared I was to. Say. Yeah, Fira seems a little more visible, and I don't know. I think the right weight for the yeah to harmonize. And look at you, old style figures. How yes. By the way, and both fonts have it. And by the way, old style in um. I didn't show it in the large slide because the old air quotes old style for these typefaces is shifting the shifting the letter. Uh, there's oh, no drawing sure. differences. There's just sure. shifting position. Sure, sure. <laughs> so I just want to point out that there's a very large flavor in these typefaces possible by these small decisions or small options yeah. available in the project. Ooh, uh, wow! Let's look at some. Wow, this is great. Now that I'm absorbing all of this, we can really see. Um, this is great sample text. We can see those G differences. Just how different. It makes everything look like wow. I don't know this. This really the unconnected thing just draws my eye a lot. I don't know if I'm a huge fan. I like it. This feels very um, source stance. Just feels like more quiet to me or something. It feels very serene. I like it very much. Yes, this, this I'd, kind of... I'd agree with that. Actually, I almost feel like the G is uh, unless he did like a current on the G O. I feel like it's too tight on the right side. Here. Yeah. Or yeah, yeah. No, I would agree. It seems a little. There's some weird. Maybe it's just rendering stuff, but there's some weird spacing stuff happening over there. I don't know. But I mean, that's that's always hard when we're making these slides. Like things get wacky. But, but look at the M. We didn't. It is trebuchet. I'm thinking of. I love trebuchet. So maybe I kind of like these M's that are angled on the side. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Any thoughts? Mm. I mean, the M, actually, it's funny. I feel like the. Uh... You can also see by the small caps edition. <laughs> by the uh, way. Mm. I think it actually speaks well, like these are small moments of like the flavor are very different. Like I feel like this is a moment, again, it has a certain more humanist vibe, right? A humanist aesthetic a little bit, or, or quoting it a little more with these angled M's, for example, or even the G, like how the G is drawn. Uh, 
yeah this feels more like you know kind of like i don't know like a i think it's i think this is based on benson's like a kind of late 1800s uh grotesque kind of model right but they kind of just softened up a little bit and kind of give more of a friendly cute vibe about the whole thing <laughs> and i think i think it's very very successful in that approach and things like the m between the two designs uh demonstrate that point mm -hmm. uh also we can see again the squareness of the rounds and like right. i look at i look at todd like jim todd and just oregon for example uh you know it just feels much more like bubbly and friendly and just kind of like hey like a little more friendly and, and like almost like a humanist sans almost uh and feeling a little bit uh as opposed to it's funny right basically both are attempting quoting humanists i feel like in its feelings in some ways but in different and very different end results because of the curve profiles and contrast between the two nice i wonder how I, if i didn't know who designed these like how i would think think of them you know, like if, if I know something's Eric Speakerman, I like automatically think like, oh, it's going to be very, we're going to have this flat A top and like very, you know, like everything's rectangular and this and that and whatever. Like I, or, you know, yeah, I don't know. There's just this vibe that I get from his work that maybe is like also filtering how I'm seeing this or something. I don't know. But anyway. So <laughs> I don't Have you seen this in, in, in use? Like, I know it was supposed to be for Mozilla or for Mozilla, yeah. Um, for Firefox OS or something, which I I don't use, so I can't comment. Seen. Okay, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're some, I'm some, I'm uh, I'm Chrome here. That's what I do. Okay. Um, yeah, but actually, actually, I would say this knowing other Eric Spiegelman typefaces, I think he's it's here. There's a certain kind of like staring hissness a little bit uh like with fear of sans I and mean, that seems as a very poetic way of phrasing it but i think his nature of curve profiles and contrast i've seen i've seen this his thinking in some ways in other projects he's worked on show up here a little bit uh so again i think it's just important to say like at first when we're, i think the first thing the main thing to take note i think we can move on to larger settings kind of see it use large these designs these are not the especially the medium medium weights i don't think they're meant to be used in this way but i think i wanted to show uh even though it seems on superficial levels initially they seem very similar the all these nuanced decisions have big effects in their text setting and results right they your impression from them are very different because of the different approaches taken mm -hmm. even though they're subtle or seem very at the initial approach very simple or not that significant man yeah i'm really like at the larger setting the word commits i'm really noticing the spacing difference like seeing that that this feels so much more loosely spaced. Looser. that's really yeah and then also things we didn't get to see with the cap f like more of those little cuts and stuff the the extended kind of little taily guy on the l wow all these little things up close hmm. what other things are you noticing here at this large size <sighs> Yeah, I mean, actually, it's funny for me personally. I always, I, 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 I bane at this myself personally. It's just like interface, RF. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's like, a good word, yeah. To test for weirdness, yeah. Weirdness, <laughs> shit. Yeah, but yeah, I agree. Generally, the the looser spacing. We can. Here's what I mean. Here's the thing, right? I think I think in general, I could say I would see fear stands is like it's it's user interface and it's meant for like smaller text settings. It's meant for that kind of purpose. I think it. I think this has been verified by our analysis. Source Sans is both also meant for user interface. I think this has more leeway. I think it works very strong in text settings, and I think it actually can hold up okay at these larger settings. Uh, at this, yeah, at yeah, this setting, yeah. I think, yeah. The, I mean, the way the curves were handled and and the tighter spacing makes it look better at this size. Whereas this, like, any time a typeface is, is is spaced out more like this, it's definitely better for for smaller settings oh i just now i have to go find them in their n natural habitats this will be interesting part two that's part of my homework i'm going to go now find these and look at them at their intended use very cool yeah awesome so aaron what are your what are your end impressions or results from looking at this mm, well yeah we you know we, they looked so similar at first glance we saw a few of those small design des design decisions and then when we saw them in side by side in those text settings like they to me they looked wildly different so i'm glad we got to look at that the very kind of oval un you know like undulating wave like you know very round feeling of source sands and then fira really seemed a lot more rectangular and um kind of 
I don't know. Yeah, this the spacing was just so different. It was it was very interesting to see. I have no good way of containing my thoughts. Tell me what your <laughs> what were what's your summary? <laughs> as as you said, basically, things that seem so similar in the beginning, from a process of discovery of font tribute, <laughs> we come to realize <laughs> so many differences and so many different approaches in the end result. And I hope that everyone watching has also learned to appreciate. Basically, yeah, as you said, you know, uh, Source Sans is much more friendly and bubbly and kind of gives a kind of tighter fit overall in feeling. Fear of Sans is again, looser spacing, is really meant for those slow, smaller settings and has a certain rigidity and kind of bluntness in itself and how it and how the text settings work. So nice. really comes down to, and that's ultimately comes down in text settings a lot or just kind of these user interfaces were not meant to get in your way. What is the kind of secondary tone or voice you want in your applications, user interfaces, and things like that? And I think this kind of sensitivity for the details that we provide in Fontributes, <laughs> it's a really important ability to, to develop for oneself. And I hope Ooh. that everyone's gained that. I've learned from this process. So I hope you Beautiful. have. Oh, side well. note. Sorry, I have to derail your awesome outro you were about to go into. But the, the cool thing about these two projects is they're both like open source projects. So you could actually go find these files and like investigate them further and play around with them and look at them and use them as learning tools as well. As far yes, as precisely. And we so encourage you to do so. Do it. So, okay. Aaron, it's been a pleasure Ooh. having you on. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Thomas. That was educational <laughs> yes all right everyone leave your comments do you agree with us do you do you about our analysis or opinions eric shame me shame me for forgetting about cap height oh god small cap height <laughs> i'm so embarrassed right now yeah anyone comment be nice or be, be nice no no be, be nice we, we we did correct ourselves on the record eric if you're listening be nice <laughs> but <laughs> oh, everyone <shit. laughs> oh good everyone have a great weekend and looking forward to talking to you all next week Bye-bye.